Hello everyone and welcome in to a new video on Octane Thermoplastic. As I said on Monday, today we're beginning our new series. I'm so excited to bring this one to you guys. I've been working hard for months to get all 12 of these done. And this is my Lego Legend of Zelda custom set ideas showcase. We're going to be running this for 12 weeks and each week I am going to show you a brand new set that I have designed. These have box art, figures, um, you can see the silhouettes on the board just to get you excited and well... I am thrilled to be making these. These are my predictions for what I think they're going to make next year. And just as a quick word of warning, they are built in the style of the LEGO group. So they are not going to be what you expect. They are going to be designed like they were sets for children primarily and adults second. They are going to have play features. And most importantly, there is not going to be an excess of new moulds. There are going to be some weird design choices because, hey, that's Lego. They know what they're doing. We don't. So some of these are a bit more on the wish side, but some of them aren't. So anyway, let's take a quick look at what we'll be showing you in wave one of these sets, which I am titling Project Yellowhand. And that is a reference that none of you are going to understand um, I'm pretty sure anyway, um, but this first series is definitely worthy of that name and dedicated to that. Okay, right, so today's the first one, so I'm starting off big. I'm going to give you a taste of what's to come, and I'm going to give you the flagship of the wave. And I bet a lot of you are expecting Hyrule Castle, but just like I said, this is not going to be what you're expecting. Um, the flagship of this wave, Z0001. Um, you can see the silhouette on the screen with 1,096 pieces. I chose my brand new gimmick, just like Lego Mario, Fire Sanctuary. Okay, so this is part Z001 of our Wave 1 of the LEGO Legend of Zelda Custom Set Ideas Showcase. And this is the Fire Sanctuary, which is dubbed the flagship of Wave 1. Now, this has a couple of interesting points to it about why I've chosen it. But first, let's get into it and I'll show you the box up. So, what you're going to notice about my designs is they are a very unique style. All the figures are hand-drawn, all the box art is hand-drawn, but the sets are designed in studio. And I, some of you are going to hate that, but... I did it. I love it. They're perfect for what I wanted. So you can see here that this is Lego Legend of Zelda set, partnered with Nintendo, set Z0001, the Fire Sanctuary, with 1,096 pieces for ages 9+. Plus. And we have mm, 5 to 6 minifigures, depending on how you count them. And it's based off Skyward Sword. I got a quick image of the back of the box. It's nowhere near as nice. Most of these sets won't have back of box images, but because this is a flagship, I whipped something up quickly. Um, showing off a couple of the play features, all of which we'll take a look at in depth. And the big thing to notice here is the map up in the top corner, which is showing you why this is a flagship, because we've got a gimmick to look at. So anyway, I'm going to read you the description, and this set will be priced somewhere between 70 and £90, pounds, so probably 100 US. And the description I wrote for this, Brave the depths of the Fire Sanctuary in the new and exciting Fire Sanctuary Lego construction playset. Solve puzzles to traverse the lava, rescue your friends and battle the enemies to make your way to defeat the temple boss and find the sacred flame. Rearrange the modular rooms in any order to beat the dungeon your way and let your child become the dungeon master. Combine Z0001 with Z0003 and Z0000... 10 to include to create a larger adventure the set includes five minifigures and a brick built magma main for added fun as well as many features such as explodable walls magma bridge tilting platforms doors working chain winch flame dowser and digging holes well, doesn't that sound exciting so we're going to focus slightly on showing you all the different rooms and here we have all five of the segments which are designed and make up this set it's a bigger set with 1000 pieces so i was able to get away with a lot more but there's still a lot i had to skimp out on which is something that i really hope they wouldn't do if they designed something like this but as you heard me earlier this is a gimmick just like the Mario, where you get to build your own courses, I thought it would be amazing to build your own dungeons with Zelda. So they all contain unique play features and can be combined with different sets which I've designed, which you'll see over the next couple of weeks, to make bigger, more, more expansive layouts. And I think that's really cool. I think it's something they should do. And I think it seems more likely to me than doing a Hyrule Castle in Wave 1. 
That's a whole other topic though. So as you can see here, we have five units. We have an entrance doorway designed just like the fire sanctuary with these crests along the top, some decorative details, some fake windows. Um, the platform is waved up to fit the modular system and it has one of the giant frogs. Got the second segment with a lava river and an explodable wall. A mini boss chamber with the magma main. Uh, the fourth chamber where you can rescue the magma and do some digging. And then the fifth chamber which features the, the temple's uh, signature puzzle with the leap of faith and the boss door. Here we have all five cut together again. You've already seen this image, but I thought I'd show you them in their intended layout. Okay, just a quick look at the minifigures, but I'll bring all of these guys up with comparisons later. We have uh, Girahim in his almost phase two outfit, where we fight him in this fight him in this temple. The Dark Lazalfos, which also make their debut in this Skyward Sword temple. Scrapper, the ancient robot. Uh, Link from Skyward Sword with a really bad editing job around his hood and led the Mogma, who isn't the one in this temple, but I wanted to include him. Okay, first room here. I've ignored the entrance because there aren't much features. It's just a bit of iconic. So let's just look at the lava room here. And as you can see, we've got some lava in the pit with a detail. And you'll notice these tiles and a bit of a suspicious thing in the wall. And as the label suggests, you can slide the lever and the magma platform appears. So in a child's head, you take your robot scrapper and you'd bring him over and you'd splash it down and the lag ma magma would appear, allowing Link to cross. This room also contains a separate secret with a lever behind, which you can push to explode the wall like you laid a bomb down. This would lead you into any room. In this case, we're entering the mini boss room where you can encounter the magma main. And this has a fun little play feature built into it where you can press the lever down and push its top off like it has exploded and died. And there's also a door which you can swing open and close to represent like when you're locked in with the boss. The next room contains a trapped magma, and you're going to have to excuse Studio's chain rendering. It doesn't love it. Um, so anyway, you dangle your magma up there and oh no, the chains on the other side of some fires. So you bring in your robot, you pour water on the flames and if you pull out the lever over here at the back, the flames will disappear allowing you to cross. You can then lower the winch and let the magma up and he'd give you some lovely little digging mitts for your effort. Which plays into a dungeon progression. I mean, he doesn't have to give you. Your dungeon mitts could be anywhere. Um, but then you can interact with these tiles on the floor, which can be slid with like a thumb movement that way. And each three of them contain different things. My representation of rupees, which is the only non-existing element in this set, besides minifigures, and a key. Because there's a dungeon door. Um, on this wall here, here, somewhere. <laughs> And that progresses you through to the balcony above the lava, which is representing the Fire Sanctuary's open air area, which you saw on the title screen, and I'll show you more later, where you can fight the Zalfos off your platform here, just a little bit of a fight. And then you get to choose between these two platforms here. And one of them has a bit of a stabilization device built into them. And you choose which one you put that one on when you build the set. And um, whichever one doesn't have the stabilization device is going to tilt whenever Link steps on it and you're going to fall into the lava. So it represents that puzzle from the game fairly nicely. You can also see some detailing that I put under here to represent that theme. Um, and I apologize to D. Girahim, there is a better one now. Um, and then it brings you up to the, the boss area, which I had to chibify slightly just to stay in a peace limit because I wanted this to be a sub 100 set. And then you've got some nicely decorated doors, which then open inwards to reveal the scripture from the game when this is where you'd fight Girahim on this little platform up here and then down at the bottom you've got the best representation of a sacred flame that I can get and that's kind of your reward but obviously the play experience is the real reward. Moving on let's take a closer look at all these figures so you're gonna have to excuse this link he was the first figure I second figure I drew um in this entire series so he's a bit rough around the edges I assure you my drawing is better than this um and he is based off the Skyward Sword variant now the way I've worked the links in this wave one is that most of them are going to be the Skyward Sword variant where I can um just because um no, I don't believe they'd make a uh, Twilight Princess and a Skyward Sword just for different sets. I believe they'd make a Child Link and a Toon Link uh, if they had to. So that's probably one of the areas where my wave is a bit a little realistic. But we got a simplified sword piece because I didn't want to make a new mold. Hylian Shield and very similar, just kind of bland Link. 
Next up, we've got Led the Mogma, who has a customized, uh, a specialized head piece even, with an attachment piece at the top for a fez piece. Now, that means that the head is going to be slightly bigger than you probably should, but I'm pretty proud of that head mold. I think it came out uh, nice. Um, he doesn't have proper legs, instead opting for tooth pieces as well as a bar attachment so that his cone with bowl piece can be attached for his big bushy tail which you can't see in the reference image. His hand should probably be black. Here we have Scrapper in both his studio and hand drawn form with a little bucket for him to pour water on. Now he was a particularly hard one because we needed his hands to be attached but I wanted some movability so I opted for the Mixel ball joints which don't quite represent the electricity but at this scale there's not much more you could do. You could say that Lego would opt for a custom piece and then attach hands using ball joints as well but um, the one thing I've tried to do is play Lego group with a mold budget and I don't think that Scrapper would get that unfortunately. So anyway, moving on we have the Dark Lazalfos here using another custom headpiece that was used heavily throughout some of the other sets that you won't see for a while. Um, he is in the darker tile and one thing you'll notice in particular is I designed the head mold around the Breath of the Wild Lazalfos instead of the Skyward Sword one because I believe that they choose the Breath of the Wild one being the most up-to-date design and also my favourite design and then just put colour variants into that mould rather than making six different moulds for each different game because art styles between game changes, that's alright for colour changes but not for mould changes. He's also got some dual moulded legs and a new tail piece. And then finally we have the ridiculously 2D Phase 2 gear him from the Fire Sanctuary. He's got his blackened out arms as well as the um, hexagonal pattern going across his chest, representing a transformation into the sword. Now again here I opted to use an existing piece in just a new colour instead of a new mould, using that hair piece that's been used as cabbage that comes down over one side um, in white. Hasn't been produced in white, however I am waiting for it to be produced in white for my real life gear him. No cape in this one and a bit of simple printing on the legs. Rounds out the figure and finishes up the character line out. But that's not all because we've got the Marmos to take a look out uh, to take a look of. I hand drawn all the mini bosses and anything that was sentient basically um got hand drawn as well as studio if they were a big enough part of the set. So you can see here the fully articulating hands as well as the detaching play feature lever. I uh, would have had some printing but I didn't bother on the hand drawn one. Um, it's enough room to grab a figure, uh, so it's a fairly accurate figure, um, but at the same time just adds that bit of extra playability to the set. We just got a couple of reference materials, so right here you can see the Sacred Flame. I tried to get that hole in where the logo would be, even if I can't put the logo in there. can show you a couple of the prints which I added to this set, particularly this design and this brick design. Here's that outdoor area of the fire sanctuary, particularly showing off the walkways, which I replicated using black fences and uh, yellow cheese slopes, and as well as the central platform where the Lizalfos is fought here. Also, the blue platforms designed after these, um, where you jump onto them, and one of them's real and one of them isn't. Um, up here, we can see the mural, which had to be cut down on detail and the larger version of the building which I had to cut down on size and I wish I could have done it bigger but piece count is everything with this and that's what makes this series a challenge. I had to do it realistically to stay within budget. We also have a couple of other images. We have the Magmamos room which I took a bit of creative liberty on but went with anyway. The design for the magma platforms which I was pretty happy with. The design of the entrance and an up close of the frog which I was pretty chuffed with how close I got considering the Lego elements. It's unfortunate that it couldn't open but and here is the model in studio, or studded eye, however you like to say it.
anyway, that pretty much does it for the set. Uh, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this set. It's the flagship of the wave, and I know it's not what anyone was expecting. But um, I'd love your feedback. Uh, there's a lot more coming, and I'm going to tease the next one in just a minute. Um, but if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss the next one. Because next Friday, we're going to be doing Z